Hello everyone, welcome to History and Culture. In the long river of history, eunuchs resided within the imperial palace, appearing artificial and effeminate in their mannerisms and possessing voices soft and delicate. Physically and psychologically, they could no longer be considered men. However, some individuals broke the common perception of eunuchs. It is said that talents can emerge from any profession, and some individuals, through gaining favor, were able to change their own destiny. In the history of Chinese eunuchs, Li Lianying stood out among them, influencing China's historical course and attaining immense wealth and glory. On March 4, 1911, Li Lianying passed away in his Beijing residence. He was the only second-ranked eunuch in the Qin dynasty, enjoying the favor of Empress Dowager Cixi for over 20 years. He even accompanied Prince Chun on behalf of the imperial family to inspect the Beiyang fleet, basking in boundless glory. When it comes to influential eunuchs who wielded power in the court, history provides numerous examples, Zhao Gao, who plotted the murder of a prince during the Qin dynasty, Li Fugua, who rose to the rank of marshal in the imperial military headquarters during the Tang dynasty, Tong Guan, who commanded a formidable military force during the Northern Song dynasty, and the Ming dynasty, plagued by powerful eunuchs such as Wang Zhen, Lu Jin, and Wei Zhongxian. Many people regarded Li Lianying in the same light, seeing him as the top eunuch of the Qin dynasty, with his involvement in important state affairs. Empress Dowager Cixi heeded his slanderous words, which led to Emperor Guangxu becoming a puppet ruler. Taking advantage of Cixi's influence, he engaged in the sale of official positions, accepted massive bribes, and showed his ruthless nature by even orchestrating the murder of Consort Chen, who was favored by Emperor Guangxu. But what kind of person was the real Li Lianying? Was he truly arrogant, dominating the court and wielding immense power? There are various speculations surrounding how Li Lianying gained Empress Dowager Cixi's favor, including theories about hairdressing, massaging, and performing in operas. Over the course of several decades, the attendants around Empress Dowager Cixi changed one after another, and besides in Dihai, Li Lianying was the only one who truly understood her. According to recollections from eunuchs like Lu Xingqiao during the late Qing dynasty, the relationship between Cixi and Li Lianying was deeply profound. He was the only one who could alleviate Cixi's worries and serve her most attentively. Sometimes, Empress Dowager Cixi even summoned him to her bedchamber to discuss matters related to the Taoist practice of longevity. Li Lianying's epitaph reads, respect in dealing with superiors, tolerance in dealing with subordinates. He showed no disrespect toward Emperor Guangxu and was the only one who took care of his daily life when Empress Dowager Cixi fled in haste during the invasion of the Eight Nation Alliance. Emperor Guangxu affectionately called him Li Anda, meaning Master Li. After attaining power, Li Lianying treated lower ranked eunuchs with great kindness and meticulousness, earning their admiration. When Empress Dowager Cixi and Emperor Guangxu passed away one after another, Li Lianying immediately requested retirement. Empress Dowager Longyu, Guangxu's biological mother, granted him permission to retire in his original position. This shows that there was no resentment towards him. The vast wealth he possessed mostly came from imperial rewards. Three years later, Li Lianying passed away and received an honorable burial from the Qin court, with the same specifications as a second-ranked official. He was one of the rare high-ranking eunuchs who retired from his position and scathed throughout history. Prior to Li Lianying, the eunuch most favored by Empress Dowager Cixi was Indi Hai. After Indi Hai was arrested and executed by the governor of Shandong, Ding Baozhen, for violating ancestral traditions and leaving the capital without permission, the 22-year-old Li Lianying was unexpectedly promoted to the position of chief eunuch, becoming a true grand eunuch. The apparent cause of Indi Hai's death was his violation of ancestral traditions, but behind the scenes, it involved a power struggle. This made Li Lianying realize that getting involved in power struggles would lead to an unfavorable outcome. He began to adopt a passive approach, even losing his salary as a punishment, hoping to be dismissed and thereby save his life. 
Although he didn't achieve his wish and found himself at the center of attention, Li Lianying remained loyal to ancestral traditions, never easily leaving the palace, and repeatedly requested to resign from Empress Dowager Cixi. The only instance in which he left the palace was in the twelfth year of Emperor Guangxu's reign, 1875, when Empress Dowager Cixi dispatched him to inspect the Beiyang fleet alongside Prince Chun. It should be noted that Prince Chun was Emperor Guangxu's biological father and the supreme commander of the Imperial Navy. Li Lianying, in name, stood on equal footing with him, highlighting his elevated status. However, during the inspection, Li Lianying maintained a respectful and humble demeanor, standing behind Prince Chun without uttering a word. Even when Li Hongzhang invited him to board the ship for an inspection, he politely declined. Although this eunuch supervising the military scene led to accusations by the censorate, Li Lianying never overstepped his boundaries, leaving no evidence against him. Based on historical facts, Li Lianying not only lacked real power but also never participated in any political decision making. Instead, he remained humble and low key. He cannot be compared to the eunuchs of previous dynasties who manipulated the princes to control the feudal lords. As for the death of Consort Zhen, there is no evidence pointing to Li Lianying's involvement. However, why is the image of Li Lianying in later generations that of the top eunuch of the Qing dynasty? During the reign of Emperor Xuanji, eunuch Wu Yangfu established the Thirteen Yaman, but it was later abolished by Emperor Kangxi, who established the Jing Shifang, Office of Respectful Service, to manage the palace's internal supervision. The Jing Shifang was under the jurisdiction of the Imperial Household Department, and it was supervised by high-ranking officials and nobles who took turns serving as directors. It was also stipulated that the eunuch's ranks should not exceed the fourth rank, effectively preventing eunuchs from meddling in politics. This system remained in place until the power struggle during the reign of Empress Dowager Cixi, who started cultivating her own trusted eunuch faction. Therefore, Li Lianying's unprecedented promotion to the second rank, marked by the wearing of the feathered plume, became an exceptional case in the history of the Qing dynasty. The diminished power of eunuchs in the Qing dynasty served to highlight Li Lianying's elevated status and left the impression of being the first among the eunuch officials. Furthermore, Li Lianying's image as an abusive and domineering figure mainly comes from the Qing Shi Gao, draft history of the Qing dynasty. The descriptions of him as wicked and unrestrained are mainly due to the fact that the compilers of the history were Qing loyalists who were deeply resentful of Empress Dowager Cixi's autocratic rule and its detrimental effects on the country. Naturally, they would not have anything positive to say about her trusted aides. The rise of eunuch influence usually signifies that the dynasty's rule has encountered a crisis. Rulers rely on those close to them to gain power but often neglect the construction of the country's institutions. Just as the downfall of the second emperor of the Qin dynasty cannot be solely blamed on Zhao Gao, or the Anlushan rebellion during the Tang dynasty cannot be entirely attributed to Yang Guifei, the collapse of the Qin dynasty was caused by being out of touch with the world, lagging behind in technology, and suffering from political corruption. However, it was not the fault of the eunuchs that led to its downfall. As close confidants of the emperors, eunuchs often took advantage of their positions to engage in wrongdoing, harming the country and its people. History tells us that the closer one gets to the highest power, the easier it is to gain trust, thus validating the cyclical pattern of the court both internally and externally. This is History and Culture Channel, like, and, subscribe, are the biggest help and support for us, thank you everyone, see you next time.